steer is cold now and hide doesn't come off as easily. All right. Got the hide off. It's a beautiful hide. Look at the fat on this beautiful doe. She's got a lot of fat. What a gorgeous animal. And now it's time to cut her up. Really a nice layer of fat I'm cutting off so I can get to these back straps here. Wow! It's going to go in the, uh, get mixed in with the burger. Look at that. There's the back strap. Came right out of here. Beautiful, beautiful meat. Highly coveted piece of this deer. You know, I don't think you need to be super skilled to cut up your own meat. Uh, you don't need to be a butcher. You don't need to have studied all the ways to cut up meat. I think a lot of it is just intuitive. Um, some of these muscles, you know, they kind of define themselves. And uh, you can follow the bone and take pieces off that way as well. And you know, anything you mess up, throw it in your, your burger pile, throw it in your canning pile, and you know, it's all good food. It's, it's not going to go to waste. So I think if you're worried about uh, screwing up your, your harvest, I think you're overthinking it. You know, the best way to learn something is just dig in and do it. And that's going to be a better teacher than, than any course or book you're going to read. Okay, maybe a course if you've got, if you can do hands-on, if you've got somebody who can teach you, you know, that's fantastic. But save yourself the processing fee and learn how to cut up your own deer. It's incredibly rewarding. I will say that after you've been cutting up deer for several days, you kind of need to distance yourself from it a little bit when, uh, at least that's the case for me, I'm like, Ugh, I'm not really that hungry for it at the moment. The smell of that meat for so many days. Now here on this hind quarter, I've separated this piece from the bone. And you can tell that this, this piece, it was just meant to come off on its own. I mean, look at that. I'm going to cut that across the grain and we're going to fry these in really thin medallion pieces and that's our favorite way to eat venison. You know, here's this other piece here, just, you know, an attached piece. I don't know what it is. Well, I'm just going to cut it up and it's going to go into the, the canning pot, which is just chunks of meat. Think of it like stew meat. So you can take any of those stew meat pieces or random pieces that you don't know. You can't you can easily identify the tenderloin and all that other good stuff. You don't want to throw that in, in into your canning pile. But all these other little random pieces of meat that you cut up and use, you know, you just throw them in your canning pile, throw them in your burger pile. It's all going to go uh, it's it's not going to be wasted. So don't overthink it when you're cutting up a deer. Just go for it. I mean that piece I'm no butcher, but I could tell that that piece needed to be separated. And there's a roast right there by itself, which I'm going to cut slices off for frying and butter. And that's how you do it. Just go for it. What do you got to lose? Really, you're, you're going to eat the whole thing anyway. And this is the payoff. like these really nice thin strips. Cutting across the grain on this. So as I go, I, I'm constantly trimming. Trimming off really big pieces of fat or gristle, you know, the connective tissue. 
it doesn't grind up well, it doesn't taste good. So um, I have a trim bucket and that can be cooked and given to your dog or animals. Heck, my dog likes to eat it raw, but uh, just the same, you know, bag that up and divvy that out after you've cooked it over the course of a winter and uh, you're going to have one happy dog. So yeah, I'm constantly looking at this and trimming away um, stuff that I don't want. So it's time consuming, but incredibly rewarding to know that we've harvested this animal. We, take, we took it humanely and nothing at all is going to go to waste. And I know exactly where this animal came from. I don't have to wonder if there's hormones and antibiotics in this animal. So it's really great. So as I go, I'm just constantly thinking to myself, is this a piece that could be um, cut and used as a fry piece like we really like? Or is this a piece that's going to get ground up? You know, what part of the animal did it come from? Is it a choice piece? Now this piece here, it's just, that's going to get canned. And here's a piece with connective, uh, kind of this outer coating. It's more, it's sort of like a sinew type of, it's just a coating on the muscle. I don't know what it's called, but when you take it off, I mean, you can't chew that, you can't really cut it that well. So I cut that off. That piece is going to the canning pile. And I'll cut off as much of that as possible. Every little piece goes somewhere. Even the bones will be... The front legs provide... Um, one of the bones in the front legs is good for using as a, you know, like a, like a scraper, like a tool for scraping down hides. So those can be saved. I know dogs really love to chew on deer legs too. I know my dog does. And there's no harm in giving them a deer leg. Unless you've got one of those dogs that chase deer, maybe it's not good to encourage their taste for, for, for deer and venison. But that's your call. So every little every every little scrap of meat that can be saved gets saved. And that takes care of the first part. Look at this. That was just this section of the hind quarter. One big roast off of that. And I still have all of this meat to go off of just the one hind quarter. So, pretty cool. What I'm doing here is cutting around the bone, the leg bone, and just following that. And this meat is about to come off the bone as long as I just follow it. I can always trim up anything I miss after I get it off the bone. But, you know, it's not rocket science. You can see right here that this leg muscle, this part of the leg muscle here, wants to detach from the upper quarter. Um, it's real plain to see. So I'm just kind of following that. And it should separate here once I get down to the bottom. One tendon there. So now I can trim up this leg, which has a bit more meat. You're going to find a lot more of the, of the uh, sinew and the connective tissue in that part of the leg. So I'll work on that later. But here's <laughs> A massive piece of meat and you can tell that it wants to separate 
into two halves as well. It just naturally wants to open up right here. And so if you do that, you can see there's two main muscle um, components to this back quarter. So I opened it up. And that's basically two, you could do a couple things with that. There's a couple of roasts, but we're not really into venison roasts. We like to cut it up, like I've said, and stake it. The other thing you could do with this piece is cut with the grain of the muscle for jerky, which a lot of people do with the back quarter. So you could cut lengthwise instead of across the grain and use that for jerky. It'll give you that more consistent jerky, you know, chew and pull if you're cutting with the grain of the meat. So I'll trim and I'll cut and I'll probably just slice it real thin like all the other stuff just because that's how we like it the best. I might, I might cut up a little and try some jerky this year. We will see. But, not rocket science, just dig in and you'll kind of, you'll figure it out as you go. So a lot of the leg pieces you're going to find are covered with this sort of coating. I don't know what it is. It's sort of a, a very sinewy kind of coating over the muscle sections. And mainly you're going to find it in the legs. It's a real pain to deal with. Um, the best thing I can tell you is just take your time and try to get as much meat as possible off of this coating. of. So what I do is kind of hold on to it like when you're, when you're uh, skinning a fish. And that's basically the same thing you're going to want to do is take your knife, you're going to hold that connective tissue, that covering, whatever it is, and just kind of run your knife across there to get it off and then you can cut it up and, and be done with this. This stuff isn't going to go through your, your grinder. It's not really going to cook away. It's, it's going to stay there and it's real, a real pain. So that's how you can deal with these, this section of, of covering on the muscles that you're going to want to get rid of. All right, so let me show you what I'm talking about. You take your little medallion pieces that's what we call them. It's really, really thin pieces that we cut off of, uh, you know, what would typically be a roast piece, very thin. You dredge it in flour, and then you throw it in a pan full of butter. Let me show you what they look like. Look at that deliciousness basically frying them like morels. Get a veggie and you're ready for dinner. Everybody likes these and you can't go wrong. Fresh venison medallion.